I'm trekking through this swamp because I'm looking for some water that you probably wouldn't want to drink. And I think I found it. Now, this water is environmentally friendly in the sense that it's got organic stuff in it, but you certainly wouldn't want to be drinking this. In this episode, we're going to be taking sunlight from a large Fresnel lens, and we're going to be purifying this water. And by the end of this episode, you're going to watch me drink this whole thing. We've got this water and the first thing that we did was we allowed it to sit for about an hour. What this did was this allowed all the mud and heavy sediments to settle to the bottom. Now if you look, there's still some small guys swimming around in there so obviously you wouldn't want to drink this either but there's also probably a lot of other very fine bacteria and microorganisms that you can't see. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to give this a blast of ultraviolet light. We're going to use a clear bottle that way the light can penetrate deep into there then we're going to go on to the next step. I'm transferring it to this bottle so everything doesn't spill everywhere. All right, this is step one. The reason for the taller bottle is because I planned on tilting it at an angle. By placing this in the sun, you don't really have to worry about the glass shattering because clear glass just allows the sunlight to transfer right through. We were battling a few intermittent clouds throughout the day, and this is pretty typical in Florida during this time of the year. Once in place, I allowed it to sit for five minutes. Any dark objects or live particles that would be floating in the water would be pretty much destroyed by the high power of the sunlight as they would heat up once the sunlight affects their surface. Fresnel lens concentrates the sunlight and increases the ultraviolet light reaching the water. Alright, we got that part done and this is uh, warm to the touch because it's clear glass so the light pretty much just went through it and there's nothing moving around in here now so that's a good sign. That's step one. Now, step two is going to be the really interesting process. All right, what we've done is we've added two new bottles to the mix. We've got a dark bottle here, and we have a clear glass jar. Now, this jar needs to be clean because this is where your new water is going to go. This, you don't really have to worry about. The cap on there, we've drilled a hole, and we've got this copper tubing. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and slide it on there like that, and then we're going to attach it to this bottle with our water in it. The copper tubing is high on this end so the steam can collect. It's low on this end. So that way when this initially will just start filling with steam that's just going to gush out everywhere. But once it starts condensing, the steam is going to have to run through its own water that it's created. And eventually it's going to start filling with water and the steam can't go anywhere. It's going to cool as it hits that water. Even though this water is almost boiling temperature, it's still going to condense. You can add a condenser up here to make it a little more deluxe, but this is a very simple system, keep in mind. Now to get started, what we're going to do we're going to fill up our bottle to right about there. And we're going to put our cap on the top. And that's how it's going to be. That's This is going to get sunlight, this isn't. So that's why this has to be clean because what comes in here, I'm going to drink. Once everything was set, and after a few minor adjustments, our project was ready to go. With some clear sunlight, the water inside the blue bottle began boiling within about 30 seconds. Still battling some intermittent clouds, we were able to get a raging boil within about 3 minutes. Usually this only takes about a minute and a half, but we did have clouds today. This was a very impressive boil and the water was going crazy. 
We were starting to generate some nice steam and we were collecting some water as it was condensing inside the glass jar. Then things got a little carried away. I admittedly got impatient with that, so we're going to use this water. I have another bottle set up. We're going to go ahead and uh, continue the experiment using a brand new bottle. This time I'm not going to have the spot as intense in the bottle. We were still getting some good steam even though we lessened the power of the Fresnel lens. The water was boiling at a pretty good pace and we were getting some nice condensation inside the jar. The jar was slowly filling up and you can see the organic material floating around in the bottom. By backing the Fresnel lens up, this widens the spot and puts the focal length short of the bottle. By doing this, you end up with a much wider area that you cover with the heat. This is perfect for heating this project. By taking a stick, you can see where the true focal point is. The bottle is not in the focal point. The focal point is right about there. This demonstrates the incredible power of the Fresnel lens that we're using. This is a crystal clear spot Fresnel lens and it can cause instant damage on just about anything it comes across. A lens like this requires a lot of experience and definitely requires a level of respect. Now 20 minutes into our project, we were about halfway done with the water. The water that was coming out was crystal clear distilled water. After 40 minutes and several readjustments, there was very little water left in the bottom of the bottle. Our experiment finally came to an end when the bottle shattered. Alright, so this has had a chance to uh, cool down. It's still a little warm, but well, here goes. It's not bad. It tastes just like regular water. It's pretty clear. It's got a little sediment in there, but it's not from that. Actually, really good. So, the next time that you're stranded and you happen to have a couple glass bottles and a copper pipe and a Fresnel lens, you can make yourself some water. Actually, this is a good idea because it can be scaled up proportionately where you have maybe a stainless steel boiler and a, uh, you know, some nice condensers and you could turn really, really nasty water into some really clean water and since most of the places that really need water have tons of sunlight, that's a great alternative. Well, I'm going to finish this up. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos. Swamp water.